guys, welcome back to our channel. Hello. And we asked a question in our last video with regards to your birth and if anybody wanted to ask some uh, questions. And we did have a few. I think we've got four questions, but I've also got questions because I've, I've never given birth. Um, so I thought I would ask some that I've always wanted to know about as well. So You're going to ask away. Yeah, so we've received three questions from the same person. So I'm going to ask you and you just need to answer. Okay. Okay. Okay, so... Actually, the first one was on our Instagram from uh, our friend who said, is it true you really poop when you give birth? Um, yes, it is true. I don't know if I did it or not. Oh, because okay. they don't normally tell you. So they don't make it oh. obvious if you have pooed when giving birth. So they'll normally just <laughs> clean it up. You're, not, you're in that much pain. Yeah. So um, yeah, you're not going to know. Sorry, we're losing the questions. It's on your phone because I'm recording on and do it again. I don't know your thingy. Okay, so pooping may I happen, might, but yeah. they keep I it discreet. I might have done it. They do keep it very discreet. So yeah. that's quite nice, isn't it? Because you yeah. don't want to know that while you're Not really, birth. no. Unless your birth partner tells <laughs> you. I don't And they're care. right down there at the bottom <laughs> and they're going to, yeah, you, you pooed yourself. I did. I, I wouldn't mind because I've already done it on a plane. So... <laughs> So Just I don't care. Don't do it on this plane. No, 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 I won't. Uh, it's not long haul, so we're fine. Um, okay, so Amy asked, number one, which of your births, so you've, well, well, you can talk about this after I ask the question. Okay. Which of your births was the easiest and slash most difficult? So talk talk us through each of them, because they're okay. all different. So easiest, talk about that one first. I want to say my last child, okay. so child number four, was probably the easiest. Mm -hmm. So that was a C-section. Um, and I think because birth number two, which was twins, so child two and three, was the hardest. Yeah. Um, just more because of how painful it was and the recovery time. And um, I think I was expecting that on birth number three. So... But I went into it thinking it's going to be really painful, and it actually wasn't. So the recovery time was so quick. Um, I was up and about, and I was out of the hospital the next day, and lifting baby, like toddlers, oh twin God. toddlers, and yeah, just getting on with life. So, but by no means is it the easy option because people do think no, it's... not at all. It's not the easy option. No. So, um, I personally. Um, when I found out that I had to have a C-section with the twins, I was distraught because I wanted to have them naturally, but mm. I just couldn't because it was so dangerous of how, what positions they were in. Mm. Um, it just what wasn't, positions were wasn't they in? The cards. They were transverse. What so, does that mean? Um, so they li label them. They <laughs> they named the twins. So twin twin A or twin B or twin one, twin two. Yeah. So let's say twin A is going always going to be the bottom one that will come out first. So with their head out first normally. Well, the one that they pull out first or okay. comes out first, whether it's vaginally or whether they cut it out out mm. of the stomach with a C section. Um because twin A was lying across the stomach, so head there and then the body was kinda of like there, so literally kinda of like in that kind of shape. So it wouldn't have been able to come mm. out um naturally. Um, it also put me in a position where it was actually quite dangerous. So they had to monitor me. Yes. So right. if I was to go into birth naturally, um, it would have been quite dangerous um, for me to go into birth naturally because I think it's something to, if something came out first, yeah. it could have put the babies at risk. So that's why I was on bed rest in hospital for four weeks after um, going into labour at 32 weeks. So, would you say that was the most difficult birth? Um, yes. Right, so the most difficult was the twins. Yeah. Isn't it funny, because I think there's a lot of people who have preconceived, because um, people don't talk about this stuff before you go into it. No. So, when you have twins, because I didn't know this until I saw one born every minute, mm -hmm. I didn't realise it was just like, pop, pop. I thought that's what it was, but it isn't. And it's no. really dangerous to have twins, yeah, um, in general, it is. Of so the... your class is a high risk pregnancy. Yeah. So I, the normal pregnancy, um, you've got healthy mum, healthy baby. Mm. You would go in for a pregnancy scan at 
I want to say oh, 12 weeks. You go with 12 weeks and then you go in for another scan at 20 weeks. Yeah. And then that's it until you have the baby. Um, but with the twins, because I had, um, I'm trying to remember the technical name for them. I think they're called Moddy twins, um, which is short for a longer version. And I can't remember the name of the of the longer yeah. longer name. That's all right. Um, but basically, they're identical twins, so they shared a placenta. So I had to go in and oh, be scanned okay. every two weeks, all throughout my pregnancy. So I was Gosh, pretty that used must to have that been hospital. Nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> but it was nice though because I got to uh, had, uh, I can't get words out. I got to um, see them on the screen every yeah. two weeks. It was nice so to you know that they were okay. Yeah, that, yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. nice. Um, okay, so question number two: Did you ever suffer from postpartum depression? If you want to talk about that, yeah, that's fine. Um, I did. So. Um, with my first child, I didn't, um, and everything was pretty smooth, um, mm. everything was okay, um, and I was okay up until the birth of having the twins, um, and then it probably kicked in maybe, I want to say, maybe three, four weeks after having them. Um, Do you think there was a trigger for that? I really don't know. Because obviously... I don't know. So, and I know the story, but it would mm. be really good. So, obviously, when you had the two, mm -hmm. um, it didn't go smoothly. And there was no. things that happened. So, they were poorly... Well, one of them was very poorly. Um, I don't know whether that would have been a trigger. I don't know. And I think it's all to do with the chemicals in your brain and the, mm. um, how <clears throat> kind of postnatal depression kind of starts. Um, but very soon after having the twins, I got pregnant with uh, my fourth child. Um, so yeah, so I got pregnant as soon after of my fourth child. So I think they were probably about three months old. Um, so I think after having the twins, I would have probably recovered from postnatal depression, maybe okay ish. Um, but then adding in another pregnancy mm. when you're kind of dealing with that, it, yeah, it kind of just boosted everything up and it, it was difficult. So, were there anything that, because obviously you don't know you're going through it while you're going through it, mm. I'm assuming. Yeah. So, w w do, do you recognize the difference from when that happened? Are you still working through it? Because it can last a while, can't it? Mm. And is yeah. there something that you recognize? Um, or looking back, you go, do you know what? I can see that that didn't feel right. And were you able to ask for help? Um, I I just felt like something wasn't right in me. So I had these beautiful babies. Mm. Um, but I, I just didn't feel like myself. I felt really, I don't know, I can't describe it because when you're in when you're in it it's yeah. really hard to kind of like look back and recognize how you felt um just because i'm so much better now yeah um was it like it was a all a bit of, of a daze yeah was it like a bit of feeling you know when you know sometimes when you're just like oh i just i don't feel right i feel really discombobulated mm. my mm. well my i feel imbalanced like yeah. i can't I think yeah, I, I just know I, I knew that something wasn't right mm. so I mentioned it to my previous partner at the time um and yeah so and I went to get some help and they weren't I, well I didn't get the right help at that time right um it took a while and we had to push to get that help which is it's it's not great that I had to really kind of like push to get it and a lot mm. of people they might have just right okay well I'll just leave it and then just kind of just go through it themselves and not get the right help um but I think once we pushed for that help then the help we got was amazing oh, good. um and I couldn't fault the team that I was under and they really really helped me through such a tough time so before I go on to the, the last question mm. from from her I want to ask a question here because I feel it's important okay if you were to give advice to somebody yeah. who might be going do you know what I understand that or they're currently going through it 
um, what, what would be your number one key advice for somebody who sort of, they might be watching this video and they go, oh my God, that mm. that's what I feel like now. Mm. Or I went through that and I didn't feel like I got the right help. Yeah. What would you, what would you say? Um, just don't give up. Okay. Um, just push for that help because I think if you feel that something isn't okay after having a child and you feel that um, you might have postnatal depression then just keep going and seek that help because there is some amazing people out there that can help you mm. um, and I was really lucky that they, they managed to help me so good that's good though because I think that you know I, I've met a few people who have mm. suffered with it and some who didn't get the help and they still mm. felt I'll always so my I remember a friend saying to me that she didn't have that connection with her new baby mm. she couldn't understand yeah. why everybody else was saying that they loved their child and yeah. she thought I could have just left him she said to yeah. me could have just left him on a bus and I wouldn't have cared mm -hmm. like that's how it felt because they, there wasn't that yeah. connection I think it happens way too much I think people aren't yeah it does it, it's not and do you know it what really it is does. I wonder if it's more of a now people are talking about it a bit more mm. more people are okay yeah. to talk about it but back in the day there definitely was that taboo subject it around is. postpartum yeah depression. but it is it's very very common to have mm. um i think a lot of people's first point of call will be to go to your gp mm. um and they will just give you some kind of antidepressants just like a generic antidepressants but it doesn't always work like that you mm. have to kind of be under the right team it might work for some people yeah. and but it, it might not work for for other people um so just keep trying to look for what yeah would work so for you. i i was on several different types of uh, medications mm. um and then i finally found the one that did help me um but it went through a lot to get to the right medication um and yeah. are you pleased that you took that route? Because yeah. some people think, oh, no, I don't want to do yeah. that because it makes me feel weak. But actually, yeah. do you think that was the, yeah. the thing that helped you? Yes. Yeah, I yeah. think if I didn't have that support behind me, mm. um, like I was the team I was under, it was called a perinatal team. Um, so it was a specialist unit. And I also had um, a CPN, um, which is a mean? community... Something, something nurse. nurse, yeah. Psychiatric nurse. Yes, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's I, yeah, you think know, so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Community psychiatric nurse. Yeah. Um, and she was amazing. So I what used to a job see her. as well. Like, could yeah. you imagine doing that yeah. job and being the person that's helping mm. mums to get through that? Yeah. Like, you, it takes yeah. a special person. It does. But we we grew such like a close kind of like bond because oh, so nice. she, she went through everything with me right from the start right to the beginning when I was discharged from her um so yeah and she was just such a lovely lady and I think that's really important like you know obviously mm. the, the NHS is very important to us but there are people who do their jobs that really care about the people yeah, yeah. you know you and I both had dealings with yeah. nurses that have just been fantastic for yeah. one reason or another yeah. so that's that's cool I like that can you unlock your phone for mm -hmm. me again sorry because <laughs> there's one last question okay the final question here and then <coughs> the so the best thing and the most challenging thing about being a mother. So the best thing first. Um, I think the best thing is. There's a lot of good things, but probably the best thing is when your child tells you that they love you, um, and then I just think you just can't get a better feeling than that, um, especially my youngest children and then they start learning to to talk and then they they know the kind of the meaning of it and they put it into the right kind of context and it's just yeah it's just amazing um, it's really interesting because i think because i'm not a, a mum, i've not given birth but my favorite thing would be knowing that you've created this little life mm -hmm. that has their own personality but has some parts yeah. of you that you can see it, it almost like a little mirror that reflects back yeah. Do you see yourself in all of them, even though they're all so different? I do in my youngest children, in my eldest, probably not so much. <laughs> um, 
I don't know, there is elements. There, there's certain elements. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in my youngest, in regards to looks, I'd say that I, I see myself in them. Um, but yeah, probably some of kind of my eldest personality traits, I see myself in her. And uh, also those first of them, because you would have had the first giggle, the first yeah. word, the first yeah. tooth, the first hair, the first mm. walk. All of that must have been just like, whoa. Yeah. I think the best thing is also, I, when I had my, my eldest, I, I was quite conscious that I wanted to kind of like video stuff to make, like when she was doing like first things. And every year they'll pop up on Facebook. Which is really nice Aww. to see that I still get to see that kind of when she was a so baby. So you managed like, to catch them and... like, oh, well, know, yeah. You know how parents are like we missed it. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I did. Out. I did miss some of the moments. Yeah. Um, like when I went back to work when she was eight months old. Um, but my mum looked after her, and she looked after her right up until she went to school. So it's I, it was nice, even though my mum didn't necessarily get them on on video. She tried to take as many kind of photos. And it was just nice that my mum got to share that as well. Yeah, so she got to see some first too. Yeah. I bet she, was she a first granddaughter? Yeah. Wow, yeah. There you go. Yeah. It's always that was me. So <laughs> something else we've got in common. Um. So I've got a few questions. Oh no, the most challenging <coughs> part of that question. The um, most challenging part of being a mother. You can give a funny answer and a sincere answer. Because <laughs> I think I know what my most challenging thing would be. I would say, I've got two. Go on then. Um, so I would say the first, the most challenging, is the lack of sleep. Okay. Um, it's hard. Really, really hard. Um, so when you, And when people say it before you have children, do you think, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. So <laughs> I remember my friends before, when I, ha when I only had one kid, and they used to say when they were younger... Oh, I'm so tired. Like I only got like six hours sleep last night. I'm mm. absolutely knackered. And I was like, if only you knew. <laughs> <laughs> but um, my eldest daughter, she didn't sleep at all until she was kind of like three years old. Oh, and God. now you can't wake her up once she's asleep. She's asleep. <laughs> um, and she's a really good sleeper. Small mercies. <laughs> but I did go through a lot of lack of sleep when she was younger. Uh, my youngest children, they aren't the best sleepers in the sense of they wake very early. Mm. Um, so if you struggle to have That's a good night's sleep... That's because it's exciting to wake up in the morning. I know. But yeah, sometimes they could be up any time between 4 and 6am. But you kind of put them to bed and then you feel like you want a bit of time to yourself in the evening. So you kind of stay up a little bit later. Mm. So you probably go to bed maybe like 10 o'clock. Mm. Um, and if you struggle or you have a bad night with the kids or you struggle to sleep yourself, you don't get a lot of sleep. So, but I kind of feel like as they're getting older, mm. so um, my boy's then only four and my younger, she's coming up for, as three years old. So I kind of feel like that might start getting a little bit better now. So fingers crossed. Yeah. So what's what's the second challenging thing? Um tantrums. And the, Is there lots of them, do you think? Um You're quite chilled out though. I am, but it's it's difficult to know how to handle it mm. sometimes. Um there's a lot of fights through toys. Through the boys, especially. Um, so, yeah. So, I would say that's probably the most difficult. And as my eldest is getting older, I kind of feel like I'm going into a kind of new territory that I haven't handled yet. Yeah. So, there's some attitude there. Um, <laughs> so, it's still... It's still I love new that, though. Me. Like, I know, <laughs> I know you shouldn't, but I always love the feistiness of somebody who's got that little bit of that sassiness and attitude. Yeah. Like, there's a limit... Yeah. And you've got to kind of put, for me, I would put a limit on it and I know what I'm like. Yeah. But I haven't got, like I say, I haven't got children, but I think I'm very good at like, um, I think I would know if it was my child where I would put the limit. Mm. And I think, I think you're in the same place. Like when I watch you, because I obviously like watch what you do, I think there is a limit for you and I can see where there yours is. There is a limit. Because I, I am quite chilled out. Yeah. Um, maybe the limit might go a little bit further than 
other people's limit mm. but there is a limit and there's only so much I'll take before I will step in and and that's every because this is the thing I think every parent's different but because every child is different yeah like yeah. I um from somebody who's had nieces and nephews and um of all different you know characters and stuff mm -hmm. I will never say I've, I, I'm a parent but I've definitely been an elder to children yeah. where but you, everybody knows that if they're not your child they're going to behave yeah. They're going to act very yeah. differently. And I think, you know, I don't take that for granted that my nieces and nephews are all very good for me because I was their auntie, so I was yeah. part-time. Yeah. So they, they wanted, they had a bit more respect. And I think that's going to be the level that we're at for the time being because I'm still not a parent. Like, I'm going to yeah. have a bit more control in that sense mm -hmm. because they'll respect me until they realise they can push me. Yeah. And that's the issue. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And I think if we, you know, I'd like to continue talking about this as we go through our relationship because I'm learning a lot myself, uh, but this is all still very new to me. It may be very different when we do end up moving in together because I've mm -hmm. never had a child permanently in my possession. Yeah. Uh, that sounds really bad, but you know what I mean? Like, I've never lived with a child apart from my younger brother when I was a child, mm -hmm. so it's obviously a very different scenario. So it's going to be really weird. Is there any funny challenges that you've had? Is there any... Uh, actually, this is a really good question. What is the funniest thing that a child has said to you and it's had you in stitches that you can remember? Or an incident that absolutely killed you? You thought it was so funny. I can't think of one. Just because there's so many kind of like <laughs> funny things. I can't just think of like a specific one. Um, was there any the kids like... do stupid stuff all the all time. All the time? Yeah, all the time. Is there any that stand out at all where you've thought, oh, got or highly embarrassed where a kid's done something? And you've gone, oh my gosh, swallow me up. Um, I don't know, probably just talking about something when you're in the toilet and... <laughs> um, Mummy! Yeah. <laughs> they it really loud. Why have you done a big poo? And stuff like that. Like, they always do stuff like that. And they'll just shout it and to us so can hear. Yeah. Oh, I know what... Um, so my <laughs> eldest, um, I think we were in the supermarket and she tapped the person in front of us and she goes, did you know that my mummy's on her period? Oh. So she, she does stuff like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing sacred. No. That's, that's what I've learned. Nothing is sacred. No. Uh, they'll I'm just, just the they'll same just as a dog, really. Think. Because the dog comes into the toilet when I'm having a, a wee. Yeah. So. There's no privacy on the toilet No, and all. everyone knows that. Like We, we know that because we were little. Like, yeah. we, we were like, Mom! Yeah. barging in when they were on the toilet you know you just don't think about things like that but there's things like where some of my kids have got like fingers stuck in like things that they shouldn't have and instead of me being really genuinely concerned I, I do laugh a little bit inside and then I'll help them but <laughs> I think so for me um not being a parent makes me much more anxious where you're really chilled out, like you're like, yeah, they're fine, they can climb on that. I'm like, <gasps> like, and it's so funny because a lot of my friends that were parents were the same, and I'd be there, mm. like they'd be on the, the swings and stuff, and I'm like, they're so small, they're so fragile, and my friends are like, they're fine yeah. because if they fall and they hurt themselves, they get back up. Yeah. Like they're children, they they bounce. Like that's what I was, I was like, like ah! with my first. <laughs> What, stressed at everything? Yeah, I was really nervous about oh, really? her kind of like being on a park and I was constantly kind of like, I need to know wherever she is. But when I now go on a park with all four of them, they don't all stay in the same place. No, um, so I try and go to a park where I can see all of them, but there's four kids running around and I've yeah. only got two eyes. So <laughs> it's difficult. So some of them aren't necessarily always in no. sight. With my eldest now being eight, she's got a little bit more independence where I kind of trust her to kind of go off on the park, even though I, c I can see her and check up on her. She can go and do her own thing while I keep an eye on the little ones because they are still little um, and they will run in front of swings, mm. kind of swinging out. And, oh, God. Um, so, yeah, so I do have to keep my eye on them. 
oh, going back onto another funny, what, another funny incident. Oh. I've just thought of one. So, my one of my twin boys was at the park the other month, and it was very, very muddy. Um, there was a zip wire. Yeah. <laughs> and he was he was running to me, and then the zip wire. Um, he just caught him. As because he ran in front of this zip wire and someone was on it and he oh, went face first into the mud, it was it was hilarious. See, <laughs> I would like... have laughed at that as long as I knew they were okay. But he was okay. Really I wouldn't have laughed no, at him if he, was, if he was hurt. But is if if it was an adult falling over, I would laugh. Yeah. Without fail. But if it was a child, I'd be the first one up. And it's like I haven't yet experienced. I, I do have a lot of anxiety not being a mum. And, and I say that in, it's really difficult for me because I know I'm I'm not going to be a biological mum. Mm -hmm. um, that's not a hard thing. I'm fine with that, by the way. <laughs> I didn't want to give birth. But the fact that now it is all going to change for me and not, I'm, I'm, I'm not scared of it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be learning a lot. Yeah. And I hope that you'll, you know, be able to go, we don't do that here. <laughs> Or, like, take me to one side and go, actually, I would have done it this way yeah. rather than that yeah. way. Because but we I... communicate quite well, so I don't think that will ever be an issue. So we'll always communicate with each other. And I've noticed that you've been really good. And I'm... So far, I think I handle things okay. Because yeah. you've not looked at me no. with, a, with a... Look, that's what I'm expecting. I sort of look for approval... Uh, all the time, but I love praise. So if you t tell me I'm doing a good job, then okay. I'll just be in heaven. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think. Do you know what we've managed to cover quite a lot? But I think we should do a part two. So if you've watched this and you've enjoyed it, and you've got any questions, I know that there are a few people that we watch on here that have young children, and I would love to hear if you've got any questions because you've got eight, three, and two now, haven't you? Yes. So I think it would be really nice if anybody's got any questions you don't have to be in a lesbian relationship no uh but if you if you're a new mom or something you know you're not an expert you've just got four children and i'm certainly not an expert but i am somebody if you're wanting to ask me any questions being the other person in the mm -hmm. relationship entering into one with somebody who has children then please comment down below. I've really enjoyed this. You too. Did you? Yeah, it's been good. Ah, oh, thank you for, for answering some of my questions. You're welcome. Thanks for open, answering Hope's intrusive. <laughs> 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 but we really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.